In famous house where Gypsy Rhodes Blanchard and her boyfriend killed her mother, Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard. These names might seem familiar because of the 2019 Hulu miniseries called The Act. Gypsy pleaded guilty in 2015 to second degree murder to killing her mother who forced her to pretend she was disabled. The now 32 year old says she was forced to live in a wheelchair for most of her life. Her mother made her believe she had cancer, bad eyesight, poor hearing and more all so people would give them money, she said. Blanchard testified that she convinced her boyfriend at the time to stab her mother to death. He is now serving a life sentence for first degree murder. Gypsy was released at about 3 a.m. this morning after serving seven years of her 10 year sentence. The Missouri Parole Board granted Gypsy parole with the rest of her sentence to be served under community supervision outside of prison. As we talked about this case in our newsroom, it reminded us of Texas's mandatory release law and Janine Jones. Janine was convicted for killing babies while she was a nurse. She was nearly released from prison in 2018 because of a Texas law that granted parole after good conduct, but conduct rather, but mothers and the local community advocated and she was not allowed to be released. Joining me now is Crime Stoppers victim advocate Andy Khan. Andy, thank you for joining us. Always nice when I get a chance to sit down and talk to you. And Andy, you work absolutely, Bill. You're better than a cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll take it. Andy, you work closely with these families to make yeah. sure Jones did not get released. Janine was supposed to be out in 2018. What changed? Yeah, so what happened in the uh, nurse baby killer Janine Jones goes back to 1977 when Texas enacted what was called the automatic mandatory release law, which basically stated any offender in the state of Texas who committed an offense, and that could be a violent offense, murders, sexual assaults, between 1977 and 1987 would be eligible for automatic release as long as they maintain good behavior in prison. So you had serial killers like the nurse baby killer, Janine Jones. You also had a Houston serial killer named Coral Eugene Watts, who killed 13 Houston area women and was credited with over 40 nationally that was actually scheduled to be released under this law. And in the 1994 governor's race in the state of Texas, that became one of the issues when then candidate George Bush ran for governor and he stated if he was elected governor, he would abolish the mandatory release law. We did abolish the mandatory release law after George Bush became governor. Unfortunately, we couldn't go back and do it retroactively. So you still had killers like Jones and Watts that were eligible for automatic mandatory release. But for now, anybody who commits a crime of violence is no longer eligible to be automatically released. All right, and you've worked with uh, many families. Uh, I've talked to you about some of these families that have dealt with heartbreak. What is something at times that uh, you may tell them or talk to them about that uh, may keep them going at times when they may feel like giving up? Well, you know, most of the families post conviction advocacy is kind of new. You, you must be well, you think when the sentence is over with, that's it. We're, we're out of the system. And then you get thrust into this whole brand new world called the parole system. So right now in the state of Texas, if you're convicted of a violent crime, you must serve half of your sentence without the good time credits that people like Jones got to be eligible for release. So for example, let's take some let's take a case like Paul Castro's case in which the defendant in the Astros road rage murder was convicted of murder and sentenced to 30 years in prison. He is parole eligible in 15 calendar years. So for at least 15 years, we don't have to deal with that. So for families, we tell them that even though they are sentenced, be prepared because down the road, eventually some offender will be up for parole and that's where we'll step in. Anthony, I mean, uh, Andy, so many times I, I've talked to you and spoken with you as you advocate for some of these uh, families. Anything uh, as we go forward into 2024 that is on your radar right now? Well, basically, we're looking at a case that we worked on in which an offender was on parole for a violent offense, and then he was charged with another felony and he was given a felony PR bond 
despite being on parole for a violent offense. And in five days after he was given a get out of jail free card, he was then charged with the murder of a 24 year old mother of three. And I told that mother, Lisa Calloway, that we're going to make a change on that, that no longer anyone who is on parole who is going to be charged with an offense while on parole for a violent offense is going to get a personal recognizance PR, get out of jail free card. That's going to end. And if someone would like to get in touch with you, how, how do they go about it? You can contact me at Crime Stoppers at 713-923-5601. You can email me at A-K-A-H-A-N at crime-stoppers.org. We are the largest Crime Stoppers in the country. I don't know if you knew that, Bill. We're the only Crime Stoppers in the country that actually has its own building. And we're the only Crime Stoppers in the country that actually has a victim advocacy victim services department. So we're very proud of what we do at Crime Stoppers, and we're looking forward to a bigger and better year helping victims navigate through the criminal justice system in 2024. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Andy Conn with Crime Stoppers of Houston, thank you for joining us. You bet. Take care, bud. All right, KPRC2 featured the case of Janine Jones in our original docu-series, The Evidence Room. It's episode 28 from season 54. It's called Nurse Number 32. You can stream our entire series right now on the KPRC2 Plus app. Just look for The Evidence Room.